Hi everyone. Today I want to record a PowerPoint presentation, but at the same time I also want to have myself visible on the presentation as well. And I'm using a Mac. Now there is the facility to record yourself in PowerPoint on the Mac and on Windows. The problem with the Mac version is it doesn't record your webcam as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record it on my iPhone here. You can use another smartphone. I've got it on a little tripod thing here, but I've also got this pile of books and I could put them on here. Now you could do that, just be careful that your phone is secure so it's not gonna fall. So this is a better idea really. And I've got a link below uh, so that you can actually see where to get this as well. So this is like a smartphone holder and a little mini tripod, both useful anyway. And this little smartphone holder, I can actually use it on the top here as well and it holds it really steady. So what I've got is I've got my PowerPoints and I've got this and what I'm going to do is record the two of them separately and then in iMovie I'm going to join them together. Now you may have somebody else who's going to do that for you. So the first half of this video is really about doing the recording. I'm going to use QuickTime because the QuickTime player actually allows you to record the screen and then this is recording as well. So you're thinking, why don't I just use the recording facility built in to PowerPoint? The problem there is I found that the frame rate was a bit different. They were recording at slightly different speeds and they didn't match up properly. They went out of sync as I started doing the editing and then it would be fiddly to try and make them actually sync up. So this works better and I have actually used it. So here's my PowerPoint and what I'm going to do is record it. You're going to have a little image in the bottom corner of yourself as you can see here. So here's the PowerPoint. I'm sure you're all very familiar with PowerPoints. I need to start my QuickTime player and I'm going to do that. I have mine down here in the dock. I'm going to click on that. You may have it somewhere else like in your applications but I'm going to click on it here. And when it starts, for me, it comes up with this dialog box to open a file. I don't want to open a file. So if you do get this, just hit cancel. Now, what I need to do is record the screen. So I'm going into file. I'm going into this option here, new screen recording. You see you can record movie, audio recording. So you can record just sound or the camera. We're going to go for the new screen recording. I'm going to choose that. And then my options come out down the bottom here. The first three on the left are for doing screen captures. That's just taking a snapshot of the screen. So you can get the entire screen, you can get a selected window, or you can highlight an area. But it's these two next to it that allow me to actually record the screen and it will include mouse movements and all sorts of things like that as well, any animations. So this is good not just for doing PowerPoint, but for anything you might want to record on the screen. And you don't need to have yourself in the image, in the picture, but I think it does really help as well. This is also doing a better job of recording the audio on this occasion. This is not a bad idea actually to have this as a backup. So here are my two options, record the entire screen or a selected portion. If I click on record entire screen, well, it's just gonna capture everything. If I choose the record selected portion, you can see this is the area here that it's going to highlight. You can see it's done there. That's what it's going to record. I can click and drag the corners. I'm going to actually fill the whole screen. I'm going to capture the whole lot because when I do the PowerPoint presentation, it records the whole screen. Under my options, I can choose where I want to save it. I'm going to save it to the desktop just because it's easy to find. There's a timer here, so when I start recording, it will actually give me a countdown timer, so I get five seconds, 10 seconds, or none. You may not need any. The microphone, well, I've got my MacBook Pro microphone here selected. I do have other options, but they're not the ones that I want. And these options down here, I wouldn't worry about too much. I have got the show mouse clicks. They are recorded, that switched on. I'm now good to go. I could click on record to give me my five second countdown. I've got my camera here ready to go on the iPhone. I'm just going to start that recorder now. That's recording. I'm going to click on this recorder here. It's going to count down. And when it's ready to go, 
I'm going to do something a bit old fashioned. They used to have clapper boards in the movie. I'm going to clap like that. Let me just do that again. When I go to synchronize these together, I will see on the timeline of my editing a spike where I clapped and you'll see I'll be able to use that to synchronize this and this a little bit easier. There are things like in Premiere Pro that will actually just do the synchronizing anyway without it, but this still does help. Okay, so I'm good to go. Both are recording. I'm going to start my PowerPoint presentation and I would go through it. And if I go through it now, I can talk through this training course I do, which is about video training, which teaches people how to create videos. And I'm just going through it quickly. You can see it's going to remember all of the animations like this. It's going to remember any mouse movements. If I use the laser pointer here, it's going to remember that. And also if I make any drawings on it. So if I want to, I could highlight an area like that. So there we go. So that's how the recording works. When you're done, I can stop my presentation. So I've come to the end of my show. I'm going to say no to keeping the annotations. Let's just discard those. And in the top here, you're going to see that there's a little circle with a square in it. That's the button to stop the recording. That's for QuickTime. I'm going to press that. I'm going to stop the recording here. I always leave a little bit of time just to make sure that I haven't stopped too soon. That's now on my desktop. I've done that recording. I've recorded this. On the iPhone here, I need to send it to here. Now, I have the same account on here as I have on there. So in my Photos app, it will appear here soon. Or I could use AirDrop. If you haven't used AirDrop, it's a great way of sending files from here to here. And I can do that simply by going into my photos and there it is. I'm just going to select it and let me just tap that. And if I tap here, it's going to send it over to my downloads. So that'll come through to my downloads. I'm going to copy it across to my desktop. So I've got that and the screen recording in the same place and you'll see it's coming through. Let's go and have a look. I'm going to go to my desktop. I've already copied that file over. So I'm going to copy that across into the desktop so that it's in the same place as the screen recording and then we're going to open up iMovie. Okay so there they are. I've already copied it across. There is the file I've got and here is the screen recording I've just done. So I could rename them but let's just keep them there. I'm going to go into iMovie now. It's down the bottom here in the dock for me. So it's this one here with the star on it. I'm just going to click on it. And here I am now in iMovie. So I'm going to click on create new. Let's just click there and I'm going to choose a movie. Okay, I need to import my media into here. So I'm just going to go over to here to the finder. I'm going to select that one. That's the screen recording already selected. And this here is the one I sent over. Let's just drop those. Let's just click and drag those in here. I could click on the import button and then bring them over like that. So what I'm going to do is I want the video that I've got. I want it to have the presentation and then I want to have me kind of as the webcam in the corner which means the video that I need to put in first is actually the recording of the presentation. So that's this one here. Let's just have a listen so I can just can click here. The in the movie? I'm going to clap. Now I can speed up going through it because what I want to find is the in points. That's where it starts. So let's Quite just bad. do that. Let me just do that again. There we go. There was the clap. Let's just go back. Okay, so let me just do that. I'm going to clap like that. I did the clap again. So let's just press I for in and I could choose where I want it to finish. So it's going to be somewhere about there. I can tidy this up once it's in the timeline. Press O for out. So in and out, that's my video. Then I can click and drag that down to here. 
and there we go. So that's where I did the clap. I'm going to change that a bit later. So similar thing here, and actually I'll have a visual to see it as well. By the way, you can use the J and the L key on the keyboard. L will allow you to fast forward and J will allow you to rewind and rewind more quickly as well. Fast rewind. So let's just press the space bar because that's play. That's recording. I'm going to click on this recorder here. It's going to count down. And when it's ready to go, I'm going to do something. Good old fashioned. These are kind of movie. I'm going to clap. Okay, so it was the second clap that I wanted. Let me just do that again. There we go. Press O for out. I'm going to now take this and drop it down here. And there we are. There's my video. So let's just do that. Let me just do that again. Okay, so where it is, now I'm going to zoom in here. There's a little uh, zoom in setting here. Let's do that. And you're going to see what I mean. You've got your audio waveform here. Can you see that line there? That's where I clapped. Can you see there's a spike on each one? That's why they use clapper boards in the movies was to synchronize the sound and they could hear that and they can see it today on modern editing software. So I just need to drag this one across and they will line up. If they didn't line up, let's just have a listen. It would be out of sync. You'd hear an echo. When I go to synchronize these two. Okay. You know when you've got it right because if I move this across, there we go. Let's do, it looks like that's it. There we go, let's just move it there so we I got the line in place and then I'll be able to see exactly. There we go. Right there, let's play it now. The clap should be the same. There we go, when no I echo. When I go to synchronize these together, I will see. There we go, perfectly in sync. So what I want to do is now go to, let's just zoom out a bit to where I actually start the presentation. Let's say it's here because you can see it down there. I'm now just going to zoom out maybe a tiny bit more. And starts about there roughly. And let's just click and drag that. And click and drag that. And let's just test if they're still the same. This training course I do, which is about video training. Perfect, that's fine. Let's just click and drag it so that lines up. There we go. I don't need the audio from the screen recording. If you look down the bottom, there's a line here with a double headed arrow. If I click and drag that, it will take the volume right down. I don't need both of them. The audio on the computer is probably a little bit noisy because the fan is going in here and that would mess up the audio there. So there we go. Now I need to make my image smaller. If I click on it, up at the top here in my window, you'll see it's got video overlay settings. I'm going to click on it. There's a drop down box, picture in picture. Look at that. Puts me right there. I can move it around. I can change the size of it and you can change it. You can edit this as you go through your video as well. So if you need to move it around, there you have it. That's your video done. So, I can now export it. Obviously I could do more and put titles in and maybe fiddle around, but this is absolutely fine for what I need. I now need to export it into an MP4 file so that it can be uploaded somewhere. And it's really easy to do, I just need to share it. So I'm going to click on this button here. By the way, iMovie saves things as you go. When I come out of the project, I'm just gonna do that, let's come out of the project. It asks me for a name for it. So let's just call it presentation. Let's click OK. And to go back into it, I'm just going to double click. OK, so I said I need to export it. It's just here in the top right corner. I'm going to choose export file. The tags it's got is iMovie. Let's call it presentation. That's just a keyword. The description. I'm just going to change this one to my training course. It's going to export the video and audio. You could just do audio only if you wanted just a podcast. The resolution, 1080p is high definition. So is 720p, but it's a bit smaller. 540, smaller again. 4K would be very big and probably not that useful 
but you might want to do it if you feel that one, you recorded in 4K and two, you just want to future proof it. We're gonna go for 1080p. That's more than enough. I'm going for best quality. Now the reason I'm going for best quality on this is if I've got images, if I've got graphs, I've got things with fine detail in it, then you need to have the best quality so that people can see the detail in it. The lower the quality, things might not look so good. So if you're doing a presentation with lots of graphs, maybe little images of things, you might want to actually make this best quality. If not, you could try high and just see how that comes out. So the compression here, it says faster, that means lower quality. If you click on this, you've got better quality, which means it takes longer to compress it basically to export it. So if you're in a hurry, you might do faster, but better quality, it's always gonna give you a better results, isn't it? So let's choose that. It's giving me how long the video is, one minute, 37 seconds, and the estimated size of the file. You can see if I change the resolution, it will be a smaller file. And let's just see 4K, wow, really big. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. Let's click on next. Wants to know where I want to save it. I'm gonna put it on my desktop and I'm gonna call it my training course again. And let's just hit save. Now in the top right, you'll see there's a circle that's appeared and you'll see that it'll become filled in in like a little wedge shape here and that will move along as it exports. And when it gets to the end and it's completely filled, you've exported your video. So there you have it. That's how you can actually synchronize together you and a screen recording using your Mac. Now there are other things you can use like Camtasia and that's really useful because it does it all, it's all built in, but you have gotta pay for that. All the things I showed you here today, well, except of course for the hardware and the <laughs> iPhone, but the software, all free. So you've probably already got PowerPoint, QuickTime is free and should be already on your computer, and iMovie is too. So there you go, a nice, reasonably priced solution. Very reasonably priced, I think. Now, the only things that you might find useful is to get this tripod thing, and I was just gonna show you here, if you put it on the book, so I've got this stand, which is handy. Now, all of these are actually good, not just for doing this kind of thing. Let me just take it off the tripod here quickly. And you'll see that actually I can pull this down. It's got a nice stand here and I can do that or that. So you can pile it on top of your books or whatever it is you're gonna do. And that's a bit more sturdy as well. The nice thing about having it up at this height as opposed to on the computer as well, they're not looking up your nose, which is a bit more flattering. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you do like this, do like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.